The House is resumed for the extended sitting. Call on Government Order of the Day number one. Waitaha claims settlement bill first reading. Honourable Tariana Turia. Mr Speaker, I move that the Waitaha claims settlement bill be now read a first time. Mr Speaker, at the appropriate time, I intend to move that the bill be considered by the Māori Affairs Committee that the committee report <coughs> finally to the House on or before the 20th of December 2012, and that the committee have the authority to meet at any time while the House is sitting, except during oral questions and during the evening on a day on, <coughs> on which there has been a sitting in the House, and on a Friday and a week in which there has been a sitting of the House, and outside the Wellington area, despite standing orders 187, 189A, 1901B and C. One of the Wakatoki of Waita expresses the full impact of the story behind this legislation. Ko Waita te iwi he tangata ngā kaurua. Waita was once a powerful tribe, but because of the loss of land, they became fragmented and have never been able to unite again. This morning in this house. We greet a new dawn for the people of Waitaka, and with it the hope of a future in which they are truly able to enjoy the restoration of their mana in every sense of the word. And so today we welcome all those who come to share the aspirations and the legacy that descend from their tūpuna, Kay and his son Waitaka. We acknowledge the breadth and depth of the rohe in which Waitaka are located from Waimapu to Mauro, along the coastline to Makitu and inland to Otane Wainuku. Mr Speaker, Waita'a Kuia, Pūnehu McCausland, has called Waita'a the lost iwi, referring to their loss of mana and the tendency for some to follow alternative tribal affiliations. In those words, one glimpses at the harrowing grief of a people dispossessed from almost all of their traditional lands to the point where the iwi nearly ceased to exist. That sense of aching loss is overlaid by a history of confiscation in Raupatu within Tauranga, an action which the Tūpuna Hakaraya Mahika opposed. The Crown could not, would not tolerate the challenge. They labelled Hakaraya a rebel and systematically initiated a process of punishment of the people from which he was known. And so, 145 years ago, in January 1867, the Crown destroyed the houses, crops and livestock of the people of Waitaka and ultimately took the life of Hakaraya. Using scourged off tactics, the Crown pursued Hakaraya to his death in 1870. Even then, the punishment did not cease. The Crown withheld a large amount of land from Waitaka, confiscating a massive 214,000 acres of land around Tauranga, including land in which Waitaka had customary interests. While the Crown eventually accepted the ancestral claims of Waitaka to approximately 25,000 acres in the confiscation district even then, it withheld much of this in payment for the sin of Hakaraya. Mr Speaker, one of the great tragedies of this period of our national history is to realise that during the 1840s and 1850s, Hakaraya, a leader and prophet of his people, preached peaceful engagement with Pākehā. The stigma of, of rebellion has been a heavy burden weighing over all of his descendants and indeed of Waitaka. It is a stigma which this legislation suggests has diminished the mana of Waitaka and force deep divisions among their own and between their neighbours. Out of that history, then, the Crown and Waita signed terms of negotiation and an agreement in principle in 2008. Exactly a year ago to the day, the Crown and Waita signed a deed of settlement at Hei Marae. And now the story opens a new chapter, a new beginning, in which the Crown seeks to restore its own tarnished honour to mark the start of a stronger relationship with Waitaka. Mr Speaker, the story of Waitaka became even further complicated by the involvement of the Native Land Court 
which gradually but comprehensively convert, converted customary title into individualised and permanent titles derived from the Crown. And so by the end of the 19th century, Waitaka had insufficient land and resources to sustain their tribe, burdened by the systematic and merciless alienation of their own whenua. It is an appalling history. In this settlement, the Crown seeks to recognise the extent of the harm done by a formal apology and initiating redress both cultural and financial. One of the most important aspects of the action is the establishment of a $3 million education endowment fund in the name of Hakaraya Mahika, a genuine effort to restore and redeem the legacy and the mana of a Apurupiti and Rangatira of central importance to Waitaa. The bill recognises the process of vesting in Waitaa two urban cultural sites, a scenic reserve based on the Maunga Ōtara, Maunga Rua in Pā historic reserve and a land and land at Papamoa, including important past sites. Alongside this, the settlement introduces an overlay classification to Wakairing Accorded or providing for Crown acknowledgement of Waitaa values and agreement on protection principles applying to two important mountain sites. A deed of recognition of special association of Waitaa has been agreed with five areas of conservation land among the ancestral mountains within the Waitaa Rohe. There will be a statutory acknowledgement of the cultural, historical, spiritual and traditional association of Waitaa with 15 statutory areas, including the peak of the Maunga Tūpuna or Tāne Wainuku, beds of several watercourses, including the Kaituna River, and the coastal area between Mauo and Makitu. Letters to ministers are included to encourage support for Mairanga Waitaa to assist the social, economic and cultural needs of Waitaa, as well as letters of introduction to local authorities. Three ministerial protocols have been agreed relating to Tonga Tuturu, conservation and crown minerals. There is commercial redress as rights over property and 7.5 million plus interest from agreement and principle to settlement. Mr Speaker, in the course of time, this settlement will be known as a landmark for the future prosperity of these people. But the final aspect I want to focus on is the 1.3 million that has been provided for a full historical account of Waita and Hakaraya. In the course of preparing for this significant day, I came across a thesis that was written by a Pākehā researcher, Alistair Rees, entitled, Are You Listening? The Voice of Waitaa, A Forgotten People. The thesis was predicated on the belief that most Pākehā who now inhabit the Rohe of Waitaa are completely ignorant of the identity of the Tangata Whenua. His view was that the impact of colonisation upon Māori was minimalised by many Pākehā through a convenience of distance. Rees makes a very strong plea to all New Zealand to learn our history, to share our stories and to reach out to understand a context which might otherwise keep us apart. To mediate this distance, I want to share one of the messages of hope in this thesis, which I believe the Waitaka Claim Settlement Bill has a perfect opportunity to address. It can be seen as both a challenge and a cry, a challenge to listen and a cry to understand something of their story, told through their history and their voice. Hopefully, from the microcosm of Waitaa, it is imagined that those who have ears to hear will be able to extrapolate beyond to understand some of the aspirations of other Māori who seek not only redress for the past but who grapple to define a future based upon dignity of restored identity as tangata whenua, first people of the land. These aspirations require not only a renaissance of Māori vision, but an affirmation and cooperation of all peoples. It is this affirmation that would possibly go some way to bringing healing and reconciliation to a country that is still displaying the wounds of the past and present division. And finally, I want to recognise the key players in this legislation who have reached out to tell this story. The negotiation team of Waitaa Araupatu Trust, the governance entity, Te Kapu or Waitaa, Tami McCausland, who lodged the claims with the Waitangi Tribunal, all those who have developed the claim, negotiated with the Crown, who have protected their Waitaa, preserved their memories and treasured all that it is to be Waitaa. 
I acknowledge the Minister for his drive in ensuring these stories be told. The people of Waitak no longer wish to be known as the forgotten or the lost people. They have risen in the spirit of resilience and reconciliation to demand a better future. We now have the opportunity to listen and to learn. I commend the Waita Acclaim Settlement Bill 2012 to this House. Tēnā the, katoa. The question is